Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2020. Is the world coming to an end and is the rapture about to happen? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I want to talk about the book of Revelation. It is by far, in my opinion, the toughest book in the Bible to understand. And it is helpful to understand the type of literature and the, the tools and devices that are used in the different genres of the biblical text, specifically in the book of Revelation, you have apocalyptic literature. Not only that, the book of Revelation is also prophetic, but prophetic literature doesn't necessarily mean that it's talking about a future event. If you look in the Old Testament and you see when uh, the prophet would prophesy, it wasn't always um, talking about what was going to happen. Sometimes it was God sharing his thoughts on or perspective on something with the prophet for something that was happening within the nation or the people of God. But like I said earlier, the book of Revelation is apocalyptic literature. What does that mean? Well, in prophecy, for example, if you hear something from God, what do you have to do? All you have to do is relay the message. You have to repeat what you have heard. But in apocalyptic literature, you're not just hearing, you're seeing. Apocalypse literally means to like see behind the curtain. You see what's really going on in the spiritual realm, if you will. And John says over and over that he heard and he saw. So if you hear something, you just gotta play a game of telephone. You just gotta pass on the message clearly that you heard. But if you see something from God in a vision, you have to describe it to the best of your ability. Apocalyptic literature um, is also allegorical and metaphorical in its nature. I mean, if you look at the book of Daniel, it talks about a beast and it represents an actual nation and army coming against them. And if you, if you look at the book of Zechariah or Ezekiel, it is using um, these pictures to describe what they are seeing behind the curtain, if you will. And that's why specifically in those three books and Revelation, it will say over and over, like. I saw, it, this was like that. Why? Because it's trying to describe a vision. Because when you encounter God, when you encounter heaven, when you encounter, encounter a vision from God, it, it's not like something you can just relay that, that was spoken to. You have to do your best to compare it to something and to describe it a certain way. And that's exactly what's happening in the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, it's constantly referring to Old Testament verses and stories and references. And so if we uproot this apocalyptic literature in the book of Revelation and we strip it of its genre and we strip it of its allegorical meaning and if we rip it off from its Old Testament roots, it can mean whatever you want it to mean. Now, just because something is allegorical or metaphorical and I say this isn't literal in the book of Revelation, it doesn't mean that I'm saying it's not true or that I don't take you know, it's seriously in some sense. No, it's definitely true. When I say that things in the book of Revelation are metaphorical, what I'm saying is there, that John is using a metaphor to describe a truth or the truth. Not that there isn't truth in what he's saying, if you know what I mean. On YouTube a few months back, I saw somebody talking about why the earth was flat and not round according to the Bible. And the guy basically says, well, the, you know, in the book of Revelation, it says that, you know, the angels will stand on the four corners of the earth. How can you stand on four corners if it's, you know, a globe? The problem with this understanding of Revelation is that he's looking into this verse to allow it to teach him something about geography, geology, or cosmology. And he should be reading it for theology. Listen, the, the number four has... Um, roots in the Bible and it has meaning. It, it means from all over. I mean, there's four, you know, uh, rivers that all meet together in the Garden of Eden. And there's other places I could talk to you about the number four, but the four corners of the earth, it simply means that uh, these angels are going to bring in people from all over the world into the family and the elect of God. It's not describing the shape of the earth. The point is this, and it's pretty simple. And I think we could do this you know, book by book in the Bible. But when Jesus says, you know, cut off your hand if it causes you to sin, it's better that, you know, you lose one part of your body than your whole body in hell. I mean, he's speaking in hyperbole. We, we know that he's not 
legitimately telling you to cut off your hand. If that was the case, every Christian would have no hands. So listen, the book of Revelation is true and it's real. It's just more layered and complex than saying, oh, look, this is literal. The question when we go to the Bible to study it is not, is this literal or is this not real? That's not the two sides of the argument. The question is, what does this actually mean based on the intention of the person who wrote it? If I write something down and you then take my words out of context years later and you rip it of what I actually meant, you might be reading what I said, but you're not actually understanding what I said. And it's easy to read the book of Revelation. It's a little bit different to understand it. I hope this video helps you a little bit when examining and studying and exegeting the book of Revelation. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Leave a comment down below on what are your thoughts on the book of Revelation. I know there is a lot of interpretations and different outlooks. I just wanted to share my opinion on this hot topic. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. See you guys in the next video.